World Community Film Festival 2017. This is Go. You're watching Go on Shaw TV Channel 4. I'm Mary Ruth Harris. We are in Tintown at the World Community Center. We have three interviews coming up with individuals that have been involved with the film festival for a very long time. And they're going to give you a little bit of an insider scoop. So that is all coming up in today's show. You do not want to miss these interviews. But at first, here is this from the Comox Valley. The World Community Film Festival, February 3rd and 4th, is coming up really quick. So get your tickets, and this gentleman is going to tell us why. Hi. Hi. How are you? I'm doing good. Excellent. Tell us about the film festival and why people should come. Well, it's a community festival. So if you're part of the community, you should be there. Right? <laughs> so that's the great thing about a festival. It brings everyone together. We have okay. young people, elderly people. We have people from all over the community that want to learn about the issues that are going on locally as well as internationally and take action on those issues. And there's plenty of issues to take action on. Well, there's a lot of documentaries that you can get on Netflix or even just through the internet now. So why bother to come to the festival? What's the difference? The big screen. Ah, Yeah, that feeling of being okay. in uh, the big theater. We have uh, Sid Williams Theater and other venues around okay. that um, give you that sense that you're part of something. And you know, that quiet and that hush and then the laughter and the oohs and ahs in the audience. Well, that, you know, it's incomparable, you know, to sitting at home and watching a a film. So, and then you're also with the community of people that are surrounding those issues and okay. want to take action on those issues. I see. Okay. So, what is your, how many years have you been involved in the festival now? I've been involved with the festival about 12 years. Okay. What's your favorite part? Well, I do like having a film in the festival, and I do have a film in the festival again this year. Oh, because so you had one last year, too. Yeah, it's been yeah. four years in a row now, I think. Oh, so great. that's that's a good feeling of feeling connected. But that also connects me with other filmmakers that are coming, so I, it okay. allows me to, to meet other filmmakers and feel like I'm really part of, uh, of a culture that is uh, creating some change in the world. Okay. And particularly this year, we're trying to bring in some uh, young groups, and um, the Comox Valley Art Gallery has a youth media project. Oh. And so we're highlighting uh, some of their short films and okay. um, trying to get a perspective from everybody. Now, do you have a favorite film, and you can't count your own? <laughs> <laughs> Do you have a favorite well, film? Well, I am very interested. looking forward to seeing the opening night film on the okay. big screen because okay. uh, of its richness and powerful. And it's also a sh film shot in British Columbia. Oh, so, yeah. okay. All right. I guess either Janet or Wayne are going to talk about that, the opening night film. Yeah, night film. actually, I'm not on the programming committee, so they've seen a, a far more films than <laughs> I have that are in the festival. So, okay. Yeah. All right. So um, tickets, what can people do about tickets? Tickets are available at the Sid Williams Theatre, okay. um, also online at uh, sidwilliamstheatre.com. And you can also get a membership, right, for the World Community? Yes. Okay. We're, we're always getting people to um, come, come out and uh, renew their membership, which okay. renews every February, February 1st of each year. Okay. And that allows you to get on our email list and get updated on events. And it also allows uh, you to use our video libraries. So we have okay. one out in Seeds uh, Natural Foods uh, in Cumberland. Okay. And we're also have, eventually have one in, uh, at the Bayside Cafe. Uh, it's moving to that location very soon. Okay, so. awesome. Well, thanks so much for your time, and have fun at the festival. Okay, thank you. Um, right now, we're going to watch this feature about all-weather bicycling. Have a look. Nice people. There's a film called Nice People. Absolutely. Yeah, That's we, funny. Prison dogs. It's from Sweden. You can tell because they're all black. <laughs> <laughs> okay. And they're from Sweden. It's, yes. It's a, it's a film about immigrants to Sweden. Oh. It, it's one of these that falls into that category that uh, is a quirky film. It's a little bit off the normal rails. All right. It's about a guy who helps integrate 
Somali refugees into the larger community through oh, engaging the it. Somalis in sport. That's awesome. And they're involved in a sport called bandy, which is much like, it'd be like field hockey on yeah. ice and on skates. Ice, yeah. And none of those people have ever seen skates. <laughs> They oh. decide to go to the Bandy World Championships to represent Somalia. Well, there you go. So that's not your standard <laughs> script for a documentary. <laughs> no, <it's not. laughs> You're watching Go on Shaw TV Channel 4. I'm Mary Ruth Harris. This is Wayne Bradley. And we're talking about the film festival, the World Community Film Festival, coming up February 3rd and 4th. If you don't have your tickets, you might want to get them. There's some fantastic hidden gems, which is what we're going to chat about. Wayne, how long have you been involved with the festival? Well, the truth is that my memory doesn't go back that far. <laughs> I'm told it's 26 years. Okay. So this year, I guess there's a lot of hidden gems, like the one we were just discussing. So what are some of the other hidden gems? I, I think probably my favorite film in the festival is called The Babushkas of Chernobyl. Oh. And it's about, it focuses on four old women that, who were living in, their, in Chernobyl when the reactor blew up. Yeah. They were shipped out like everybody else. The barbed wire was spread around the, yeah. the community and they snuck under the wire and went home. And they've been living there ever since in their original houses and, uh, you know, doing what they do. They've got enormous gardens and uh, Holy. It's a, it, <laughs> they are real characters, those guys. That they, you just have to love the, the old women. The story's got some interesting lessons to sh show us about the assumptions we make about the world when we just get our news from the, the, the mainstream media. Yes. Well, we've seen a lot of that lately, but we're not going to talk about that today. No, we're not going there. <laughs> the babushkas of Chernobyl. That does look really... I love the picture. Here, yes, no. see, Gord, can you get a shot of those too? is not that hilarious? That is awesome. Well, that sounds like fun. What's another one that you really like? I think like? they were just getting together for a, a vodka party at that point. <laughs> What's the, another hidden gem? The brainwashing of my dad is oh, a really okay. serious look done in a kind of a lighthearted way, but it's a really serious look at how media and our culture uh, serves to form our opinions. Mm. And this woman, the filmmaker, uh, is talking about the impact she saw it having on her father. Okay. And um, that, yeah. uh, it, it looks at the role of the, it's an American film, it looks at the role of the, the, um, me, the talk shows, yes. the radio talk shows. Yes. And uh, um. how, it, then it gets into social media. Right. And we get into our bubbles and we and can the, just gradually... And the fake news. This guy goes from <laughs> being a sort of an uninvolved liberal democrat to a raging uh, Tea Party supporter. Holy... Okay, well, on that note... <laughs> we'll, um, leave, we'll leave that one. Please get your tickets for the f film festival coming up on February 3rd and 4th. And right now we're going to head up to Campbell River for this week's Council Currents. I'm Mary Ruth Harris. Joining me now, Janet Fairbanks. We are here at the World Community Center in Tintown, and we are here to talk about the film festival coming up February 3rd and 4th. Mm -hmm. Let's talk about opening night. That's a big deal. Opening night is going to be a very big deal this year. We have um, a, an amazing film from Nettie Wild, who has attended our festival. Nettie's a filmmaker who's been to our festival at least four times. Okay. And the film is Conalina, Conalina, Our Land Beautiful. And it's set in the uh, Taltan um, uh, traditional territory. The cinematography is absolutely brilliant, and the sound is absolutely brilliant as well on the film. And what this film does is it, it makes um, every shot is, is like an art piece. Mm. So she looks at some of the dynamics that are happening in terms of development in, the, in northwest uh, British Columbia. Okay. And um, the tensions between people who want some development mm -hmm. and are looking forward to better jobs. Yeah and the people who really want to protect these very special places. Right. So the film doesn't take a position on that, but it lets us look at all, all of the different points of view. Mm. So it's, um, we expect that one to be a sellout for sure. Okay, so get your tickets. Get your tickets, <laughs> yes. Now, what's your favorite thing about the festival? 
Oh, the excitement that I feel about the festival is is watching people respond to the films that are such a surprise to them. And this year, I think we have a really broad range of films, and most of them are really uplifting and inspirational films. So okay. I expect to see a lot of smiles this year. <laughs> now, do you have a favorite? That would be really difficult to choose from. Um, I guess I like... I like a lot of the films that follow individuals mm -hmm. in their pathway of res resilience mm -hmm. when they've had some challenges in their lives. Like the babushkas of Like Chernobyl. the babushkas. <laughs> I, I was just thinking, we actually have another one called The Soccer Grannies of South oh. Africa. And uh, it's called Alive and Kicking. And uh, these are women ranging up to 85 who are wow. playing soccer. What? And oh, they're actually playing. They're playing soccer, <laughs> absolutely. So How that's, that's kind of that? one of those hidden gems yeah. as well. Um, and, you know, in terms of favorites, uh, of course, opening and closing nights are, are always favorites. Um, the, the committee chooses those specifically because we really all love those films. Mm -hmm. But all day on Saturday, there are other films that, that are going to be wonderful films for people to see. Um, there's a film about the development of the, of the steel band uh, in, uh, in Trinidad and Tobago. So oh. lots of music in that. Right. And the history is really an interesting history of how that developed as well. Okay. Um, so, you know, pick, it, pick any time of the, of the day and you'll find yeah. great films to go to. Awesome. Well, Janet, thank you so much. I really appreciate your time today. And please get your tickets. Sid Williams Theatre. And can people get tickets here as well? No, no, it's okay. online. The tickets online, are just okay. at Sid Williams Theatre. But one thing you can do is you can go on our website, worldcommunity.ca, okay. and check out the trailers to the films. And that'll ah, help you choose, choose which, which films to go to. Okay. And there's also a link from our website to the Sid Williams Perfect. to get the tickets. Awesome. Great. All right. Thank you so much for joining us for this week's Go. I'm Mary Ruth Harris. We've been on location in Tintown at the World Community Center. Coming up, February 3rd and 4th is the Film Festival. On the back of this is the schedule. And it is great because it lays it all out for you at all of the locations. The Sid Williams Theatre, the Upper Native Sons Hall, the Lower Native Sons Hall, and the Florence Philberg Rotary Room. The opening night and closing night are at the Sid Williams. And don't forget about the Saturday Social, Social Justice Bazaar. There's going to be over 40 groups at the Bazaar, and that's in the Upper Florence Philberg Center. And you that starts at 9.30 and goes till 3.30. What's nice about that is there's some really great coffee and lots of chocolate and lots of food. And there's also tables set up where you can sit and converse and just meet your friends and family and have a chat about what you're seeing and, and decide what other films you're going to take in. The great thing about this is you can go to the website worldcommunity.ca and you can view all of the trailers for all of the different movies and you can choose which ones you really want to see. And then if you don't get to see them on the festival weekend, there of course they have their library and by the end or middle of February, it will be at the Bayside Cafe, which is the old Sirius Coffee on Cliff Avenue across from the Driftwood Mall. I hope that helps. So thank you so much for joining us today. Have a great week and we'll see you soon.